Jamaica versus Croatia. Lens, 14th of June, 1998. Goalkeeper, Warren Barrett. Defenders, Frank Sinclair. Onandi Lowe. Ian Goodison. Wingbacks, Robbie Earl, Ricardo Gardner. Midfielders, Theodore Whitmore, Peter Cargill, Fitzroy Simpson. Forwards, Paul Hall and Dion Burton. That's the Jamaican squad. The Croatian squad, goalkeepers, Drazen Lidic, Mahan Mirmic, Vladimir Viesu, defenders, Goran Juric, Zovanir Soldo, Slavan Bilic, Igor Stimak, Dario Stimak, Zoran Mimic, Igor Tudor, midfielders, Zvonimir Broban, Robert Prozineski, Mario Stanic, Robert Gianni, Algiso Asanovic, Silvio Maric, Kruzilov Jurilo, Anthony Sercic, forwards, Davo Suka, Goran Vyachevich, Adlan Kozniku, Peter Krapan. We've arrived in Lons. On entering the coach park, there was a feeling of trepidation which slowly changed into one of excitement when our fellow supporters and rival fans started to arrive at short intervals. To the surprise of many people, there was no segregation from opposing supporters. The coaches were parked side by side. Each newly arrived coach was welcomed with chants of Reggae boys, reggae boys, the reggae boys. Even more surprising was the friendliness of the Croatians, who embraced the fans of the reggae boys warmly and were already willing to exchange shirts, take photos and even share drinks. There was a feeling of walking into the unknown. As the stewards directed the hordes of Croatian supporters, dressed in red and white, and Jamaicans decked out in their national colours of black, gold and green, along the tree-lined route, similar maybe to that of Fern Gully, which led to the stadium. The sounds coming from beyond had a somewhat magnetic feel. It was almost as if we were being pulled towards the sounds of drums and music, playing to a reggae beat in the distance. Then suddenly we were there, outside the stadium, and a blast of colours liquid from all directions. Boy, looked like something special I go on here today, you know. There was nervous anticipation before the game begins. Free kick, with them red shoes there. It must score with them. But Mars red shoes never did score. Whenever the World Cup has been contested previously, Jamaican fans had traditionally given their support to Brazilians and had shown more than a passing interest in the fortunes of the Cameroons and the Nigerians. This time Jamaica had their own heroes to cheer on, something only the most imaginative amongst them had previously fantasised about. It was hard to believe that this was reality. In the past, the World Cups of Pele, Puskas, Eusebio, Zico, Socrates, the indomitable lion, Roger Miller, and Maradona, the world had looked on in awe at the spectacle of colour and sounds. Created every four years by this fusion of nationalities, the ticker tape greetings of the Argentinian fans, the trumpets of the Cameroon supporters, and the yellow clad, samba dancing of those scantily dressed Brazilians. True enough, the predominant colour blanketing this ground at first appeared similar to the yellow worn by the Brazilians at this World Cup and at those of the past, but everybody was soon to realise that this was something entirely different to anything that had ever been experienced at any of those preceding competitions. What the Jamaican fans had created in this football stadium in the north of France was not simply an imitation of Brazil's bright yellow. This, in terms of atmosphere, was pure Jamaican gold. If they could bottle it and sell it, Jamaica would be a financially wealthy nation. As it is, the fans showed that Jamaica has a wealth of warmth, vibrancy and unrivaled passion when it comes to supporting the reggae boys. The Jamaican fans who had brought a mixture of every Caribbean carnival the rhythms and reggae beats of paradise and an unprecedented gala of noise, excitement and colour into the passionate World Cup forum for the first time ever were almost silenced by a Croatian goal scored by Stanic in the 27th minute of that pulsating opening match. A goal brought about by a mixture of pressure and luck. Almost silenced, but not quite. You see, the fact is, these Jamaican fans are born of optimism filled with pride and enormous reserves of spirit. After all, though they come from a nation of only two million people, they have managed to produce luminaries such as Bob Marley, Marcus Garvey, General Colin Powell, Lennox Lewis, Merlin Otti, Linford Christie, John Barnes, Donald Quarry, Ian Wright, 
Trevor Burby, Alan Skill Cole, Mike McCallum, Tigat Davis, Michael Holden, Courtney Walsh, Lawrence Rowe, Collie Smith, Tessa Sanderson, and a host of other famous, familiar, and influential 20th century figures. They had come with expectations, and being one goal down did not dampen their fire. The unique party atmosphere they had brought with them into the football ground in Lons went down a gear, but still outdid anything experienced up until then at France 98. And then, in the 45th minute, as the ball moved from Ricardo Bibi Gardner's boot, connected with Rob Beale's forehead, and bulleted goalward, bulging the back of the Croatian net, the place absolutely, totally, crazily erupted into a frenzy of black, gold and green. Women jumped onto men's backs and hugged total strangers. Home-based Jamaicans shouted, Saladon! People clapped and danced in their euphoria. A congre of supporters started to snake its madly happy way around the ground. Remember, this was no ordinary football match. It had become an event, an occasion, a celebration, a festival of fun. Football with a smile, yet still. Even in all the mad, crazy, maniacally happy, haphazard euphoria of that crowd, the reggae boys' supporters maintained a unified rhythm. As the chant, reggae boys, reggae boys, reggae boys, rose in volume to a crescendo that drowned out the halftime whistle. If we had thought the stadium was partying before, well, what followed showed that they had only been getting started. For that 15 minute half time interval, Lon Stadium experienced football heaven and the players weren't even on the pitch. Japanese, French, Brazilians, Argentinians, kilted Scottish fans, their faces bizarrely painted like Jamaican flags, all nations parted together in an exuberant, ecstatic, elated, delirious, rapturous, cosmopolitan melting pot. Robbie Earl's header had not only brought Jamaica level with one of the tournament's favourites, but had created another piece of history for Jamaica. Their first ever goal in the World Cup finals. The team had gone from being reggae boys to men. Lord, we get one! Jamaica has scored. No more nervous anticipation. The Jamaican supporters were still so caught up in the frenzied, joyous celebration and belief following the first half equaliser that many say what happened next was almost a blur. The players were on the pitch and Simo's reggae men, for they surely were not boys, stroked the ball around confidently, effortlessly, with ease. The belief in the black, gold and green was, momentarily, broader than Broadway. Momentarily. Eight minutes into the second half, a Croatian goal, scored by the almost unpronounceably named Prozineski, dampened the fever in the ground. What had looked like a harmless cross from the red and white shirted Croat dipped over Warren Barrett's head, clipped the arm of Anandi low and dropped softly into the Jamaican goal. Undeterred, the black, gold and green masses congregated behind the goal, sang for the first time, When you check it out, lad, no way no better than yard. Say when you check it out, lad, no way no better than yard. A Euro-Caribbean-Mexican wave rolled its deafeningly noisy way around the ground as the fans, one set hiding their anxiety with their chants, the other buoyant, continued this celebration of soccer in unison. Croatia, also in their first World Cup ever, a nation born of a recent civil war, were on the up, a mood sensed by those supporting the reggae men. If the words, No way no better than yard, sung out by Jamaica supporters were a script, then obviously the team in red and white either hadn't understood it or hadn't bothered to read it. In the 69th minute, a shot from the man who would eventually go on to win the golden boot as the tournament's top scorer, Davos Suka, temporarily doused that yardy fire. If even the Brazilians, the Japanese, the French, the Scots, the amalgam of nations in the ground who had taken the cause of the underdogs to their hearts, dropped their heads, you can imagine how those whose affinity with the island went beyond this one game were feeling. There was, however, genuine relief in amongst the Croatian fans as they started to sing the words to an old pop record. I don't like reggae. Oh no. I love it. And though the chill of the French evening had now penetrated the stadium, the reggae men's supporters refused to let the temperature cool the atmosphere. When the final whistle went, though disappointed, the warmth remained as the true black, gold and green support applauded. Not only their own team, but also the Croatian team and their now jubilant fans. 
and the French for their hospitality. Other nationalities who had, for at least 90 minutes of their lives, allied themselves to the cause of the non-European nation and also celebrated the fact that Jamaicans had, at last, a team qualified to do football battle on the pitch with the best teams in the world. After the match, Croats and Jamaican supporters swapped shirts, flags, baseball caps and went on to each other's coaches in the coach park outside the ground. They laughed, talked and drank rum and vodka. One cheeky Jamaican fan waving a $100 Jamaican note. Not even two pounds sterling, our three US dollar, was seen to buy a Croatian football shirt with his money. In the days before the match, so the French said, the town had suffered from wet and miserable weather. Remarkably, match day had been sunny and, until evening descended, warm. You know who brought the sunshine, don't you? Yeah, sure the result said the team had lost the match. But if you were there, if you witnessed the reaction of those who had travelled to the north of France, bringing the sunshine of the Caribbean with them, you would know that René, the Professor Simoz, meant when he was heard to say after the match, Jamaica never loses, Jamaica always wins. <laughs>